Welcome back. Now, Parliament's Standing Committee on Public Accounts, that's SCOPA, has conducted oversight visits to railway train stations in Nyanga and Kailicha in Cape Town earlier today. Now, the passenger rail agency process tracks in Cape Town have been occupied by illegal squatters. And like some parts of the country, plagued by cable theft and vandalism. Earlier this year, the passenger rail company made some commitment to resolve these issues and improve services for the thousands of commuters who rely on this mode of transport. My colleague, that's our senior reporter in Cape Town, Aisha Ismail, who's covering this story for us today. Let's go live to her now. She's back in our studio just to get uh, an, an update. So, Aisha, good evening. Welcome to today, and thank you very much for your time. We've seen the scope of conducting these visits to these various train stations today. In, in Cape Town, in Nyanga, and Kailicha. Uh, what were they looking for? What was the main reason for this visit? So this is not the first time that Scopa conducts these site visits. They were there earlier this year. They went to Nyanga, Langa, Kailicha, and Philippi. Now, while we saw an increase in, in um, encroachment on railway stations over the past year, and particularly post, or sorry, um, particularly during COVID. Now, let's take um, Philippi, for instance. We saw a couple of hundred um, shacks going up just before COVID, but during COVID, it increased to a point where there are over a thousand shacks just in Philippi around the railway station alone. And if one looks at Philippi station, it has been, um, you know, the vandalism and the theft that has taken place there is, it, it's actually, um, hard to understand and I'm, I hope that we are able to show our viewers the visuals that we got today at the um, Philippi train station. There are no windows um, at the station anymore. Um, infrastructure has been ripped bare. Even the manholes, the lids have been removed. However, at the Kailicha station, we have seen new cables because um, cable theft has been a big issue in the past. We spoke to some of the Prasa people and they were saying that they believe that they have actually made good progress, particularly in the Kailicha area. They're of course now working to get the trains running again in Philippi and Nyanga, and there is a bit of service also running in um, on the Langa railway line. But of course, the main issue here is when will the people who are living in and around the railway lines, when will they be able to be relocated? And it is for this reason that Scopa paid their second site visit to these areas today. This is what the chairperson of SCOPA had to say after that visit. Obviously progress has been made in quite a number of fronts uh, to restore even a limited service, but uh, the progress that has been made is far outweighed uh, by the challenges that prevail. And hence then the decision to um, have this follow-up visit uh, and tomorrow to then bring in the relevant stakeholders uh, to actually take it to its next step. The issue is the relocation uh, of people. And so monies have been made available, but there's no progress. So it's our assessment that there's a lack of political will, a lack of collaboration, and a lack of um, you know, teamwork insofar as, as all these matters are concerned. So it is our view that um, tomorrow must provide a certain level of clarity, uh, direction, in terms of where we're taking this next. The situation is not sustainable in its current form. Right? It's not just the location and presence of people on the railway, but it's the negative impact it has on the service. But also there are health considerations as well, if you look at uh, where people are living and how they're living, and particularly children. So it's got a ripple effect um, for the state bill in terms of dealing with all these things. And the longer you delay it, the more permanent you make it, and therefore the more difficult it becomes to resolve. It's going to become, the longer you take, Mr. Hlengwa says, the, the chairperson of Scopa, Aisha, the longer you take to resolve, it's going to become more difficult. But what about Prasa itself, the passenger rail agency? What are they saying about this situation? 
Well, Prasa is saying that their role is to get the trains running. They're not in the business of providing houses or building communities. And so what they're saying is that while they're getting their house in order, they're calling on other stakeholders also to play their part. This is what the head of security of Prasa had to say. Started originally from Department of Transport um, and uh, they approached uh, HTA as an implementa uh, implementing agent. Um, through that, uh, 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 Department of Transport also made funds available to HTA to assist Prasa because our mandate is to run trains. Our mandate isn't to move people or to create communities. So that was the first part. The, inter the, 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 the integrated uh, uh, um, uh, uh, compact that was signed by the by City of Cape Town, HDA, Prasa, Western Cape uh, Human Settlements, National Human Settlements, that's the implementation plan. It's very clear of what needs to happen via that implementation plan. The sticky points of where we're sitting now currently is Prasa and the community itself. All of them, whether it's here where we are currently, the Philippi batch, as well as the Kailicha batch, everyone is just waiting on to say, what has City of Cape Town and HDA done with the money that was initially given to them? And what is the long-term plan? What is the long-term plan? So that the people also know the long-term plan and Prasa can get on with it. Because Prasa, as it, as it stands, is making its own plan in order to deliver the trains directly there. But now our hands are tied. It's bigger than us. We need the people to focus on that implementation plan and its roles and responsibilities. No, it makes sense to me. What is Prasa's mandate? It's very clear. The other stakeholders, as you say, Aisha, need to come to the party. What about the residents? What are they saying about this? Did you speak to any of them? So, Dan, yes, I did get to speak to quite a few of the residents living along the railway line in Philippi. And obviously, they're saying it's not a nice place to live. Um, they say when it rains during winter, their houses are flooded. But they're saying that they have nowhere else to go. And living there, they, they stay there for free. And what's interesting, again, is that they were saying that some of them arrived there as far back as 2017 and also then said to me that there were just a couple of, of um, informal structures. And then, of course, during COVID, when things got really bad, when a lot of backyard dwellers had to then move out from where they were living because people lost their jobs, they, they no longer had money to pay for rent. And so they came and put up their in their informal structures along various railway lines but they're saying they have been given some work by one of the contractors to clean up where they are staying at the moment and with that money they are able to buy basics like food um, water and also electricity but this is what Shane Nodia had to say to me and she's been living there for seven years already we that live against the railway line, we don't have toilets. The people that's living inside have toilets. So whenever you take your bucket, the dirty bucket, and you go throw it in there, and at the end of the month you must give them something in the end. Because they say it's their water and their rates and stuff like that that they pay. And how much do you have to pay them? Sometimes you give 200 rand, sometimes you give 150. It all depends how much you can give. And you say that you have to pay people for electricity because yes. you don't have electricity. Yes, you have to pay 350 rand to 400 rand, some or 600 rand a month. Oh, these are for illegal connections? Some of them do steal from ESCOM, the boxes bypassed. But due to gangsterism, you can't expose them. One of the residents there along that railway line down in the Cape Town speaking earlier to Aisha Ismail.